The box from the locker. What am I going to find inside? A shoebox? What's the connection with Sean's disappearance? Am I the one who, who put this box in the locker? I don't remember! I took a room in the first motel I saw. Gotta open it, and find out what's inside. According to our sources, a child disappeared from the Stanton District yesterday evening. He was last seen playing in the park with his father. Full details are unknown, but following the disappearance of Jeremy Bowles, there is suspicion that this again may be the work of the origami killer. If confirmed, it will bring the number of victims to nine. Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. 
Dad! Dad! This video is being transmitted in real time. This is happening now. Rain. He's in a well that's filling up with rainwater. The more it rains, the more the water rises. Sean, he's alive! If I don't find that well in time, Sean's gonna drown. He's... he's gonna drown. Oh my god, Sean! Sean, what have I done to you? The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? I came here to find a killer. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With... Or without your Fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. 
How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. Nathaniel Williams is our prime suspect. He's already been questioned, and he lives in the exact geoprofiling zone. No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I'd come to Earth to persecute him. <laughs> Real twisted. All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. The walls are covered with writing. Quotations from the Bible. It's stifling in here. Those windows haven't been opened in years. You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Where do you work, Nathaniel? Do you have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. 
What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. Better just stand down and leave Blake to, to it. I, I guess Blake's trying to break him, but what good is a confession if he does? He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't he? He needs more and more. What's Blake looking for? Why is he pushing him over the edge? No. no. Shit! Blake he is totally out of his mind. I can't just here. stand around and do nothing. He told you to go and find I gotta stop Blake. Park. He's going too the far. Has tormented you all Blake, night what are you long. doing? You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Maybe Blake knows stop. what he's doing after all. Stop! That's enough! So you obeyed them. I've got to do something. You took that boy with you and you That's drowned enough. him. Leave Isn't him right? alone. Oh. No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you going to confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, Nathaniel. I shall Nathaniel. you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy Shoot, us. For Christ's sakes. Shoot! Drop the gun! Now! Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Demon! You shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power! I'm here to help you, Nathaniel. To get rid of the voices in your head, but you have to trust me. Christ all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Keep calm. Everything is going to be fine, Nathaniel. Back away. Slowly. Now drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! In the name of the Lord. I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak. The show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would've just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. <laughs> Maybe not. But most of the time it helps.